Are you looking to spice things up in the bedroom? Have you been fantasizing about surprising your lover with an adventurous new toy or even an adult movie? Well, here's the offer for you that you won't be able to refuse. Go to adamandeve.com for a limited time only. You'll get 50% off just about any one item. You'll also receive three free adult DVDs for a little inspiration, plus a free extra gift so sensual we can't mention on the radio. And to top it all off, they'll even throw in free shipping on your entire order. So check out adamandeve.com today for this special offer. Type in Just Us Girls using the code U-S-G-I-R-L-S at adamandeve.com. Again, offer code U-S-G-I-R-L-S at adamandeve.com. See you there. You are now listening to Between Us Girls, the podcast, where we discuss life's fuckeries and then some over wine. Hey, welcome to our show. This is Michelle. Danielle. And Sharonda is not with us tonight. Uh, we do have a guest, but before we get into that, we're going to talk about our positivity as usual. We're going to talk about what we're sipping on, and we have a special Black History moment for y'all tonight. Danielle, what's our positivity for this week? So our positivity is you got to have faith in yourself before others can have faith in you. <laughs> That's true. So it's just like, you know, any, I think it's what any trait that you have, you know, that anything that you desire of somebody else, like you also kind of need to possess that before you start requiring that of other people, you know? So if you want to want others to believe in you and think that you can um, perform, like you also need to believe in yourself at the same time. I like that. Mm -hmm. I like it a lot. I think too, um, it's hard sometimes for people uh, to have continued faith in themselves, especially whenever like you're starting a new endeavor or you're doing something fresh and you maybe mm-hmm. you're not used to it. And the results that you're getting, you know, are wins, but they're small or maybe not seen across the board. So I think it's good for, mm-hmm. for Danielle with her positive ass to be dropping positive knowledge. So thank you for that, Danielle. Mm-hmm. So what are we sipping on tonight? So we are sipping on, um, I'm about to mess this name all the way up, mm-hmm. I guess, Roble Dorado. It's a tequila barrel aged Chardonnay. The vintage is, where's the vintage? I think it's a 26, oh, it's 20, yeah, it's a 2016. And the alcohol content is 13.2%. Wow, you know what? That's pretty good. Yeah. We better turn on it. So what's up with Black History Month? Okay, so yeah, so this is Black History Month, February, the month of love. And, you know, we also got to show our Black people some love. Black love. (laughs) (laughs) You liked it. So our Black History fact is um, Gladys West. She was one of two Black women that worked at a U.S. Navy base in Virginia in the 50s and 60s. She was a mathematician that helped develop technology that we use every day in a multitude of applications. It's the global positioning system, otherwise known as GPS. Okay. Because let me tell you something. (laughs) Thank you, sis. Okay. Like, so her work contributed to the accuracy of GPS and the measurement of satellite data. So thanks to Gladys, you can now track exactly where your man is. Okay, let it, let him know. Gladys told me. So for this, we salute you. Okay, our sister in Black okay. history. Right. Find your man, find your friend out. Like, thanks to her, you can do that. Amen. 
And I personally like to use my GPS as a baseline for when I'm going to get somewhere because I'll race it. Yeah. yeah Always. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, yeah. oh, oh, an hour. Watch. And then usually in the morning, I'll be like. So an hour and 20 minutes instead of the actual first hour that you said when I left the house. <laughs> but OK, so our guest, Marcus D. Wiley, I feel like I'm going to let Danielle introduce him because because <laughs> she was like, so I got a message back. So I'm going to let her do it. Go ahead. Go ahead. I mean, I was really surprised. I really think he was going to message me back. Right. But, um, so he's a comedian. Mm. College professor, aka Ooh. Bishop Secular. Ooh. Whoa. <laughs> he's toured around the nation with his clean, edgy, Christian based comedy. And then he's also a PK. If you don't know what that means, he's a pastor's kid. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> What's so <up>, fun? <laughs> Welcome to the show, Marcus Wiley. Yes. Marcus Wiley. Hey, what's up, ladies? Thank you for letting me be between you. Oh, oh get oh, between wait. us. Wait, 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 hold up, hold up. It says but between us ladies. You know, I don't even know how we came up with that. Between who? us girls. Yeah, I don't know who came up with that. I think it was Sharonda that came up yeah, with that name. Yeah, we were just talking about conversations between us. You know what? I could easily search for the conversation and find it. See? Yeah, I don't I don't know who came up with it. I, actually, yeah, I think it was Sharonda. Yeah, I think it was Sharonda. See? Yeah. So, I mean, it's kind of like, I think at first we were like, but we're women. Or, yeah, that, you know what I mean? <laughs> but but it works. Like, because it's basically like when you get together with your girls, yeah. it's still girl talk. You yeah. know what I mean? They don't call it women talk. Right. Some, yeah. Sometimes they do, but that's not right. as fun. Yeah. You know? And like, I've been telling people all week, we consistently for the last two plus years have been selling the same thing every week. It's girl talk and wine. Come yeah. Get it. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. Girl talk and wine. Yeah. So, like, before we get into anything, like, what is your sign so that we can properly stereotype you? My zodiac? Yes. Zodiac sign. Uh, Libra. Oh, I've been complaining about Libras all week. Fair and balanced. Why? I'm balanced. (sighs) Well, because my son is 14. Okay. He's a Libra. Okay. And he uh, continues to go to sleep after school and forget to get my daughter off the bus. So... I'm afraid that I'm that I'm going to probably be under investigation by CPS mm-hmm. because I'll be at work, you know. Yeah. And he's like, sure, mom, I'll, I'll go ahead and get me off the bus. And then yeah. and then he don't. So let me <laughs> ask you a question. When was the last he's 14? Uh-huh. When was the last time you whooped him? <laughs> I'm going to have to box him. No, 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 no. I'm saying when was the last time you put hands <laughs> on your son who forgets to pick up his little sister, your daughter? Probably last month. Last month, <laughs> like it don't. It's like it don't take. Like I'm a. I, this is what I plan to do. This, this is, is my plan. Me, she hasn't whooped him. <laughs> well, well, yeah, when I, I when I slap when I well, I'm not gonna go into it because I don't. Again, I'm afraid of CPS investigation. <laughs> but he was always like, oh, "You don't have to hit me." Oh, I'm like, but yes, I did. Because really, I should have like. I really need to body rock you. But what I think I'm probably gonna <laughs> do is just rake all the electronics because you know that's what moves them. So if he can't take pictures of his waves yeah. and he can't talk to his buddies on the PSN, I think mm-hmm. that is where it's going to hit him the most. Mm-hmm. Well, you think that's where it would hit him the most, but you should hit him. Well, I should hit him the most. most. <laughs> I should hit as him the well most. as taking away all of those things. <laughs> so, so like a double duty, like yeah. A, yeah. So you first, see, see, that's, the, that's right. the problem with the new parents. I know you know times have changed. Yeah. But I think if you want to get the best out of your kid, you're probably going to have to use some old school. Yeah. Methods. Um, what I've been uh, doing recently for both of them, actually, is uh, excommunication. So I'm going to explain what that means. It means that I don't have to cook your favorite food because I don't eat that shit. Mm. And I don't have to carry you back and forth to X, Y, Z because I'm not going that direction. Yeah. So... As far as Michaela goes, I just been throwing away her toys because she just leave them on the floor. Oh, you don't want it. Yeah. So I just toss it out. Mm-hmm. You know, it's kind of like I wake up in the morning and I go out to work, you know, because you need food and some because I mean, shit, if it was just me, I could go live in the woods. <laughs> you know what I mean? I wouldn't even mind that. <laughs> Build me a little hut out there. But because you guys need, I go to work to a job that doesn't make me happy. And then I come home and I don't even get disrespect. Oh, no. Excommunication across the board. Mm. It's been working fairly well. Okay. I say he did. He was doing really well for like a month. Okay. Okay. Really, really well. Mm. I'm talking about listening, doing his job, which is just clean the kitchen. Mm. 
and pick up the baby from the bus. Yeah. I don't require a whole lot. But the last couple of days, I'm just like, bro, <laughs> what the hell is going on? You know what I mean? Like we talked about this because now, because what he don't realize is because I already have to pay for before school care. And now I'm going to have to pay for after school care. So that's money. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We don't have to go do fun stuff mm -hmm. and things like that. So, you know, mm -hmm. I'm working on it. You're probably going to find out that he got boxed down. You seen the color purple? Yeah. Beat him. Beat him. Beat him. Beat him. I will. Yeah. <laughs> Why did I know that's what you was about to say? <laughs> Because he's crazy. Beat him. But why do you think that now is such a big deal for us to like, like discipline our kids the way that we want to? Like, why do you think, how do you have this happen where, mm -hmm. first of all, mm -hmm. oh, I mm -hmm. thought that was mine. That's you. Mm -hmm. um, how do you think this happened? Like where we got to the point where, see, that look, that's mm -hmm. the one right there. Like, why? <laughs> how do you think we got to this point? Like, Danielle, do you, I mean, how do you think we got to the point where we're not allowed, not allowed, but like, it's always. It's not allowed. I, I mean, I don't follow that norm. Like, well, so, I mean, my thought as far as, you know, child rearing goes, I think that kids need a healthy amount of fear. Yeah. And um, when they have that fear, you don't necessarily have to hit them. Mm -hmm. You know, so um, like I probably... I, like, I remember distinctly one time where I spanked my son when he was little because he took his diaper off. Okay. Mm. And decided, I'm going to poop right here on the carpet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's like, so we were in a potty training phase. Mm -hmm. It's like, so, so you know that you got to go to the bathroom. Mm -hmm. Right. And so you take it off. And instead of you actually going to the bathroom to do this in mm -hmm. your pot. You decide you're going to do it right here on the floor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I was I was so angry and I probably was a bit too much, too forceful mm -hmm. with this spanking that I that I you gave. You felt like you, you felt like it was. <laughs> we, after that situation, he never even wet the bed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I can't even imagine you that upset. You see how that worked for her? <laughs> yeah. Beat him. I feel like my kids are like, like, uh, What's that man named the Terminator? They'd be like, what? Swaz on right here? She'd be like, oh, so you beat me. Watch this. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I have to try, like, I have to try unconventional methods because for them, they'd be like, you just crazy, girl. Calm yeah. down. Yeah. You know what I mean? They're like, it's like they just feel like, here she go again. Yeah. Here she go. And yeah, I don't know. Like, I think, I think my son, he was just like a um. He was more so afraid of me, like embarrassing him in front of his friends mm, or whatever. Sure. So, like, like I would threaten him with coming to his school yeah. and like a uh, moo moo and rollers, yeah. even though I ain't never really had no whole right. lot of hair. Right, right. But like, uh, yeah. <laughs> you get like a little, like a straw. You'd be like, I'm gonna be up there though. You know. <laughs> so it's like these little threats that I would make, like they would be effective enough, and like, and and. If ever a teacher called me, like that was in, in the discussion, automatic whipping. Like, right. I don't even know why. I don't even care why she's calling me, mm -hmm. but she's calling me because something something is wrong. Or You've been acting up. I don't, yeah. I don't even care what the situation is. So when they would call me, I'd be like, so you know what's going to happen when you get home, right? Yeah. Now. Because like, I don't want these people calling me. Because I'm already at me. work I having to deal with me. this. Like, you I, really think this is extra. It's like straight <laughs> irritated or whatever. Additional irritation that's unnecessary. Yeah. <laughs> we got like way, way. Oh, off do we have a topic? What was the topic? We don't have no topic yet. Okay. <laughs> she always want to stay on topic. We ain't had no topic. She's like, we off topic. So I, I want to know, like, how long have you been doing comedy? Yeah, I've been doing comedy since two thousand two. So how long is that? September twentieth, two thousand two was first time I touched stage. So what, what was that first experience like? Oh, that first experience, I was doing it because the lady said she was gonna give me five hundred dollars. So. <laughs> Uh, the money thing again. I started off right. I'm about money. <laughs> right. Yeah, not about the love, the calling, all that kind of caught up after like, the money. The money was first. Yeah. And so she gave me, um, she paid me $500 to do a coffee shop out in Pearland, actually. Pearland, oh, wow. Texas, before it was all built up the way it is mm -hmm. today. Mm -hmm. And then um, a couple of days later, she hit me back and said, the people really enjoyed you and we want to do it once a month. And I'm gonna pay oh, you really? seven fifty. Oh, because oh, wow. you brought because you brought them and they were well. You, you know, you <laughs> know, 
right. took care of business. You had your receipts ready, so you Come was like, on. okay. And I was like, really? You're going to pay me 750 to get up and just kind of like talk in front of people? And she was like, yeah. Uh-oh. So we signed a, we signed a contract and everything mm-hmm. and, uh, for a one-year contract. And um, Wow. And that's how it never stopped. From there. So where like, was how this did again? I'm sorry. Yeah, no. the, where was this? It's the, a, the, Muddy Waters. Okay. It was a, a coffee shop in Pearland. Great name. So like, where do you, how do you come up with your material? Uh, I come up with the material, uh, my life, friends' life, stuff I see on mm-hmm. a daily, you know, material is even now, you know, it's, uh, it's always, it's ongoing. So you're just like constantly observing everything that's going on. And yeah. Like always just paying attention. Yeah. Nah, mm-hmm. see, I, I, I'm not a news comedian. Like yeah. I don't do current events because mm-hmm. those things tend, it's only for the time. Yeah. You want something you know. that's going to be able to like yeah. sort of always Something that's timeless. Relevant. Yeah. It yeah. was something, I was reading something that, that was like a, um, I was reading, I was talking about the political comedians, how hard it is now mm-hmm. with Trump mm-hmm. being in office because mm-hmm. everything changes like on an out not, not even a day-to-day hour to yeah. hour basis yeah. so it's like really hard to even build material around it because by the time you go to the next stop yeah it's like old news yeah. Right? Yeah. you have yeah. to almost have to change your show like really yes. yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. And right. you know what i've noticed too is like i'll post on my um creative page like <laughs> like light <laughs> political stuff like just talking like briefly i'll even say you know i'm not endorsing anybody i'm just talking People don't like it. They'd be mm. like, mm. like mm. scared almost to yeah. engage in that. And yeah. even though it's something that they feel, they're like, what if people are watching? You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So it's it's probably difficult too to like, you know, be in your truth in moments like that because what if you lose your well, followers? Because well, a lot of people I, say that. I don't mm. know about that so much just because um I think that you find your people. Yeah, I definitely you know what I mean. Too, I believe that. Um, and then especially like with being on Twitter a lot, like, mm-hmm. and then the climate right now is so divisive. Um, Very. Yeah, mm-hmm. and so like it's just reading comments. It's like you know everybody is like on one side or the other, and it's like it's really hard to have to find like a happy medium. Mm-hmm. Like it's kind of it's kind of crazy, and I, I mean I'll see posts on Twitter that have like thousands of comments because they are trashing Trump or yeah. whatever. Mm-hmm. Or you have the Trump supporters over mm-hmm. here and it's like, see, I told you, da 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 Like, mm-hmm. it's just so, it's it's so crazy to me now. Like, I mean, again, we like way off or whatever, but. Off of what? I, <laughs> right. Okay, so I was well, talking. Well, he's not a political comedian, so that's well, what. We're just yeah. having a conversation yeah, about yeah, yeah. life yeah. or whatever. Mm-hmm. But I was talking to uh, Ronnie this morning, actually. And he said that he knows a guy who even though like he's not a Trump supporter, he took Trump jerseys to Trump rallies in 2016 and made $40,000. Yeah. <laughs> he's selling jer- jerseys that say Trump on the back. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's not a bad money. idea. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, yeah. if you want to make some money, I mean, yeah. and the thing about that is, I mean, I'm, I'm assuming that the guy that was selling this stuff was a minority. Probably, yeah. It's like they even they feed so much oh, off of it. Like, yes. Yeah, yes. Yes. yes, yeah, yeah. They like gotta they, have it's it. like, oh my god, it's a, a black person that's supporting Trump. Mm-hmm. We love you, my brother. Like, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you get it. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> See, we're not racist. It's like you're trying to prove a point. Right. Yeah. They you are. Know? Yeah, hmm. because honestly, it's like if and this is goes for just like white people across the board. If they don't know any black people, it's so difficult for them to prove that they're not racist. They're like, yeah. but I'm not racist. I mean, but the thing is that the same is for us. If you live in an environment or a neighborhood where you don't have anybody but you, yeah. that's what you, mm-hmm. you know, that's what you kick it with. Yeah, I think the word is definitely overused mm-hmm. today. Like, for instance, I'm blacked out, right? Mm-hmm. And I'm fine with that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And what I mean by blacked out is every school I went to, black. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Went to HBCU. I've worked at the two blackest companies you ever find in BT and Radio One. Mm-hmm. So all I know is black. Mm-hmm. I support black. I'm down with black. Now this don't mean I dislike or hate right. white or yeah, Asian. Like pushing away us. I'm pushing away. Yeah. Right. My life just did not <laughs> put me in positions to where a white guy was my best friend or yeah. a Hispanic guy was my. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So I'm blacked out. So a lot of times, even with white folk, when I do get opportunity to watch stuff on TV, mm-hmm. just because they down with white, 
it don't mean that they racist. Right. Mm-hmm. I agree. Like I deal with my people. Right. Like when you started off, you, know, you were saying Black History Moment, you know, I know everybody want to get black people try to get real black in February. Right. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm like this all the time. All the time. <laughs> My doctor's black. My dentist black. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Everything I, you know, now I'm for good business, not just for black business. It's got to mm-hmm. be good black business. Yeah. But, you know, I tend to lean towards my people because that's who I, that's right. who I'm comfortable with. That's who I can kind of, I feel like I kind of can trust. Have a connection. I have a connection uh, with. Automatically, So yeah. why, why do black people get mad when White people Do are like that, or yeah. Asian or mixed, so or Hispanic. So I'm, I mean, you naturally gravitate towards, towards what you know. Exactly. Right? Right. Like the, those are your people. Yeah, but know? our problem is <laughs> we only give our people one shot. Oh, that is, oh my God, God that is, is so, so true. Terrible. That and is so true. And then we gone. Oh, we think that this other race can do it better. Yeah. So and that's I'm, the problem with us. I'm glad you brought that up. Well, thank you. <laughs> okay, so I've been working on this initiative, and it's just called. Hashtag black dollar pop, right? Black dollar pop. It just means pop the black dollar more than For sure. once. For sure. So like, let's say um, Danielle owns whatever. Yeah. Sure. I, I know her already. Yeah. I want to spend my money with her because I could, I could buy it at Walmart. Yeah. But I'd rather, you know, spend my money with her. Yeah. But every time I approach somebody with this and I'm like, I know you have a business idea. Why don't you get it going? That mm-hmm. way, you know, because you have a natural knack for whatever it is that you're doing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Every time I approach somebody, they're like, mm, mm, mm. I'm like, mm-hmm. like, you don't trust me yeah. w- to see what, what I see, you know? And it's just crazy. It's like, like you said, yeah. we already trust each other, but we don't. But we don't. We don't. Mm-mm. Like I have to go provide two, three, four months worth of receipts to mm-hmm. say, I know how to help you. Right. Or before somebody say, okay, Michelle, let's, let's work. Yeah. And it's just like my neck hurts right. from trying to talk to Negroes, <laughs> trying to build this community up. Yeah. Cause I mean, that's what everybody keeps saying they want. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, let's do it. They're like, girl, go sit down somewhere and yeah. just shut up. Cause you know, you can't. Yeah. Yeah. That's you know? the thing. We in communities and people call them, oh, this is our community. Well, it's not if you don't own anything right. mm-hmm. in the community. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then when you have people who, are tr- who have creative ideas, business mm-hmm. ideas, they trying to do it, then you get them such a hard time. Oh. I mean, you know, you know, they're not getting a loan at the bank. Yeah. Right. I mean, <laughs> you already know they got to get cousin such and such and aunt right. such and such to help them in the kitchen. Mm-hmm. That's why the, right. it, the food taking so long to come out. <laughs> right. It ain't that it ain't good. It's just that we, it's, we, it's we, homegrown. It's home. It's homegrown. Yeah. They got we, one stove. We starting right. behind. We starting behind the eight ball. They got one sewing machine. They trying to make seventeen of uh, what's it, Miss Seely's um, uh, folks pants. Is that what she had? Mm-hmm. You know. So. But it's real. It's like so. I went and met with this lady today, and I think Danielle, we can probably utilize this space for anything we want. Actually, um, it's a barbecue business, so. Um, she wants to have a black market. Mm-hmm. They have a huge space, a really great gazebo. Mm-hmm. And I was like, awesome, because we know so many people who sell wares, who have shows and stuff like mm-hmm. bands, everything. Mm-hmm. And she's not charging a lot, like $15 per sand, which is nothing mm-hmm. to come out and just fellowship, have community. You can go in the barbecue place inside. They got a liquor license. So if you want to sell your fruity drinks or whatever oh, you got. liquor license. You know what I mean, though? So, like, if we really can make this happen, we can really start building. Because our little network is covered with people. I got a seamstress. I got photographers. I got an editor. I got writers. Everything I need right inside of our network. Mm-hmm. But it's like, if, if we don't tell them, hey, you got this. They're going, no, I don't. Yeah. I'm just going to work. Right. You know what I mean? But right. like, I feel like we're born with the gift that God gives you. And the gift is kind of stifled by public school or regular school because they want you to learn what they want you to learn. What they want you to learn. Instead sure. of, which is fine. We need that. Sure. Let me be great. But let me be great. <laughs> yeah, no. Let for my sure. natural. Let my role. skills and my gifts and my talents right. let them shine. Because that's how your when community When you throw them on a star test, I, we may never see them. Right. Because I'm not a test taker. But I you. can. I can figure out, I can work a strategy like nobody's business, sure. but if I have to get in front of a yeah. circle bubble, I'm like, great, yeah. my score. Yeah. I got a 900 combined on the SAT, mm-hmm. but I'm not in, unintelligent. I just You got a what? A 900, a 450. I got a 660. You did? <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> oh my like, goodness. I, I know. Six sixty. But you're so intelligent. You see Very. that? Very. But then that that makes people think, well, I'm not smart. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. because I didn't get a good score on the test. Yeah. But that's not what you're now, supposed to be. They let doing. me take the SAT at a club. Right? <laughs> See, my problem is it's a cold room. It's a white man walking around, mm-hmm. looking over my shoulder, all that. The pressure, the pressure. It ain't pressure. Just like I'm not comfortable. Yeah. Like, bro. Yeah. But if they would have said, yo, take it at the club. They got a little music, you know, bumping in the vibing. background, vibing. Let my creative juices flow. Right. I probably would have scored uh, 1100. You'd have been like, I know how to do this. Bink, 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 yeah. bink. Put it in terms that you can understand. That I can, yes. So you can study like, <laughs> all right, let's go. Okay. So where were we? Anywhere? I mean, anybody. Just anyway, pick up. So you've been married for what? 21? 21 years. Wow. Yeah. Been married. She, she meant what she said. She meant. <laughs> so how did you know that she was the one? Oh, she was the right girl at the right time. You know, uh, I do this joke about how men, men look for the right Men marry at the right time and women look for the right man. Mm-hmm. That's why we own two different, you know, wavelengths. Mm-hmm. You know, men marry at the right time. And she was the right girl mm-hmm. at the right time. Mm-hmm. A lot of times you the right girl the at the wrong, wrong time, time mm-hmm. you know, and and you you know, you like, man, we should be together or whatever. And dude just like, it ain't, this ain't my time. Yeah. He don't want to lose you. Now, he ain't saying ain't my time. Wait or nothing. He, right. he, you know, he want, doing what he's doing. We want to waste your time. Right. But I'm just saying, he ain't finna let you let you make it. Yeah. But I'm just saying. Because I don't uh, want you with nobody else. Right. Fe- because I, I might be ready in a yeah, minute. Yeah, right, yeah. Now, right, not- right, right. But as a female, I'm just saying, you need to recognize it ain't his time. Right. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm saying. And not take it per- so personally. And not take it per- Right. You know. Like I just recently ended a relationship with somebody I was with for like almost four years. But he just wasn't. like he Four wasn't years. Gonna, he Let's talk about four it. years. He wasn't going to do it. Four years. Yeah. Oh, okay. They got deep. <laughs> I mean, is you gonna shame me or is four, you gonna? Is you gonna you, no, no, no. I'm not shaming you. I just want to use yours. Four <laughs> years. When okay. we talk about four. Like, so I got married in. Uh, what? Nine months. Nine months of, but it's because that was the time. It was the time. This yeah. so. Uh, this why I'm bringing More it. More state. This why. This why. Uh, come on now. <laughs> this, and this is why I'm bringing it. Bringing it like this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. When we know. You know. You know. You just know. Yeah. You, you know. You know. And I don't know. Like when I hear people saying, man, like, we've been together, like people come to me, they be like, man, how long you been married? And I say, let's say I say 21 years. Okay. So you and yo, y'all been, y'all been together by the same time me, me and my wife. I know you've been married 21 years. No, nah, we've been married seven, but we, <laughs> but, but we've been together for 20. I'm like, no, cuz that ain't the same. Bro. Stop, stop trying to get in my category, man. Stop trying to make what I'm doing. Like it's easy. Right. And see, but the thing is, is that there's always people, um, who are like, well, just give them time. I'm like, girl. Yeah. <laughs> and you know what made me say, I'm not doing this? Was that I looked at myself one day and I had all this gray hair that I didn't have when we first started dating. Mm-hmm. And I was like, and ain't shit changed. Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, you know, it's not that uh, I didn't care about him. For sure. But the season was over. For sure. You know, it was time for me and to do something else. And this don't mean that the, the, the girl was bad or the guy was bad. Yeah. Sometimes I, it's just not it. Right, it just don't work. It just don't work. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But again, my problem, not problem, but what I look at is when 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 you beautiful young ladies doing your thing, y'all fantastic, and you now you're grown and you allow a guy to kind of like get all of your good years. Yeah. Yeah. Mhm. And what I'm trying to present is saying that, hey, he'll know it ain't going to take four years yeah, right. or X amount of time. Right. Just right off rip. So that's all I'm saying. No well, shame. you know, I think for for me specifically, I don't know about other women who wait that long. Mm-hmm. I think I needed that time because okay. I think I don't think I was really ready either okay. to receive what I deserve. Mm-hmm. Kind of. You know what I mean? So it's like after I decided. So why be together? Right. So I was like, huh. There was a lot, there was a lot of a lot of 
moving parts to that. I got you. You know, so it was like when I kind of went, mm-hmm. I was like, this ain't it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Because here's the thing, like with this marriage thing, man, 20, I've been, so I've been married 21 years and it's been great. Mm-hmm. Overall, I'm just mm-hmm. saying, mm-hmm. overall, it's been fantastic, man. I I don't regret any of it. I would do it again, mm-hmm. right? But that don't mean it's always been easy right. or smooth sailing, right. right? You know, mm-hmm. and, but I think when you, you know, when you know this is what you want. Me and my friend were just having this conversation earlier today. We were like the last of the Mohicans on this marriage tip. Mm-hmm. On your friend group? Huh? In your group of friends? Yeah. Okay. Like, like no, no, no. I'm saying we were the last of the Mohicans, meaning like I grew up, I had a mom and a daddy. Oh, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Or my friends who maybe didn't have a mom and dad, they had grandparents. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So we had opportunity to see an example of, mm-hmm. and not only see an example, but knowing, hey, bro. I don't care how many of these guys you run around here with at the end of the day, pick one. Yeah. Because, because that's what it's all, you know, yeah. that's what it's all about. So I'm yeah. not trying to act like we, we some perfect cats. I'm just saying, but we had the foresight or we had, we had the uh, wherewithal mm-hmm. to say, okay, I'm at TSU right now doing me. Yeah. But I got to pick me one. I got to get me one yeah. out of here. I don't think that guys have that same sentiment these and days. And that's what I'm saying. We, yeah. were, we were the last. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were yeah. the last of that. Yeah. You know, so. Yeah. And I think I think sometimes older men, mm-hmm. even though they might take a while to mm-hmm. say, okay, I'm ready. Yeah. I mean, they, they get it. Yeah. You know, or, yeah. or maybe they got a divorce or broke up with somebody or something, that, but they get it. Yeah. Well, I just think now one of the big things is. Uh, so many choices. Yeah, yeah. I was just about to say that. Like, so many choices. Yeah, the options and okay. the options. I mean, don't get me wrong. Even when I was coming up, we had options, mm-hmm. but man, we didn't have these options. Right. I think I I saw I, I saw a documentary. I think we talked about this um on one of our episodes where they had a, there's a documentary on Netflix about like Tinder and, and mm. Bumble and okay. stuff or whatever. What Those dating saying? sites? Yeah, yeah. Dating, okay. like, like online dating basically. Online dating, yeah. yeah. And they were talking about uh, specifically, with, which I didn't even know that Tinder and Bumble is owned by the same people. Wow. I'm sure. So yeah. corner all the corners. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but like Tinder gets like a million swipes per day, mm. you know, and they were there was like so many different guys that were talking about how, you know, they... They'll see a chick and they'll meet up with her just like at at like a random place, like a for coffee sure. or something or whatever. And then if there's not an immediate connection, it's a wrap. It's, I'm done. Yeah, it's done. Yeah. Like so it's like there's no trying to actually build a relation to see if there's a connection or whatever because well, see, you have so many yeah. options. It's, it's hard to be committed. We don't even have to go with the relational aspect. Just watch this. I love ESPN, right? Mm-hmm. That's, that's God's network. He blessed. <laughs> he blessed. <laughs> I know y'all think it's, you know, y'all think it's, uh what, Lifetime, but it's really ESPN. <laughs> ESPN is God's ESPN network? ESPN is okay. God's network. We'll put that in the show notes. <laughs> right. ESPN is God's network. <laughs> and then now they have ESPN 1. Mm-hmm. ESPN 2. Mm-hmm. ESPN three college, mm-hmm. ESPN college, ESPN news, mm-hmm. ESPN deportes. It's too much. Oh lord! It's, I mean, it, and so now when I'm looking at it, I'm just I want to watch this. I want to watch this one. I want to watch this one. And you don't even know which one to start off with, right? Well, it's my the game is too, too much. Many, it's now. too many it's, options. It's too many options. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so now when I look at the dating scene. Mm-hmm. Oh man, with this Facebook and this IG, and then all these, what, all these particular, the all these particular things the that angles. you just named, they, mm-hmm. yo, it, it's too much, man. One of my boys, we went in Dallas. He's single cat, and he said, "Ooh, the tender hot." Right. So I said, "What?" So he explained to me that he said that he was in Dallas. Yeah, mm, and they were like, bleep, 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 bleep. So he just, <laughs> he just showing me all these. We were just. They ready, they ready to hook up right like, now. Pick me, pick me, pick me. And I'm going, is that how this works? Mm-hmm. And so, because, you know, I ain't, I'm not, of course I'm not on it, but when he said that, I was like, God dang, I, it's tough out here on you, Jack. Because now we don't know what type of women they are. 
But they some sluts. But oh. <laughs> Well, I'm not gonna, I ain't gonna, I'm not saying that because I got a couple of friends that got married. Oh, oh, Come on, they, that's they, right. But what I am saying is, they all look like they got it going on. That's mm, what really, I ain't talking right. about looks, I'm just yeah. talking about the information right. and everything. Uh, yeah. uh, catch flights, not feelings. Yeah. <laughs> and she really, she's sitting in there on the mattress on the floor. She's like, somebody gonna right. get me, somebody gonna get me right. and rescue me from this life, right. you know? But yeah. I think, and this is like a, a thing too, is like the pick me's. There's a lot, oh, there's yeah. a big yeah. thing. Okay. The girls who are like, yes, yes, I will do all the things. It's, yeah. Guys do it too. They, yeah. they make these long posts mm-hmm. about, you know, how a man should be mm-hmm. and how they should treat a woman. And this is what I would do. And, and it's the same thing with women. It's like, you know what? My man will never have to come home and not have a meal. Uh, yeah. Or, you, you know, it's like, okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. I, girl, okay. Unrealistic. So, what, so what they putting this on? That's on Any what? social media. Oh, any social media. Okay. Or their yeah. dating apps. Oh, okay. Like, you know what? My mom was telling me and she was talking to me about uh, my stepdad and she was like, oh, because last night it was taking us a while to get home. And she was like, oh, he's probably something about food. I'm like, he did not marry you because of some food. You know what I mean? <laughs> Here you go with your uninformed single self. Well, I'm not single. Slow thank down. you. Oh, well, I, I well, might not be married, but I'm not single, but I do cook. No, but my no, mama, one day no, out the week, it's okay for her no, if to you, take. She works. If you're not married, you're single. Okay. Well, oh, I'm not. Okay. I, I do know how to handle and 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 keep a man at least 75% satisfied. Okay. I'm, I'm not saying that, but but, but what you I am saying. It. I didn't try it. Well, I, I didn't try it. But what I am saying is, just take me, for instance. So, my wife is gonna say tonight, "Hey, bro, what you what you what, what you doing? You when you leave there, you, you gonna get you something to eat? Cause if you come here, we having what we had last night, okay. tacos. <laughs> okay, all right. But no, I'm, I'm just using that as an example. Yeah. When you kind of like in a certain type of rhythm and routine, mm-hmm. yes." They will expect that if you don't start something, you don't want to finish. Well, it ain't about stuff you don't want to finish. It's just communication. I, I don't think your stepdad would have been mad. No, because he but, cooks but himself. Especially if I'm informed, hey, yeah. man, I'm not. That's all I'm saying. It's communication, though. No, because I, mean, I, she, I do it. If I'm coming home, if you ain't, if I'm coming home right now and you ain't hit me and said, hey, bro. It's not going to be no food. Ain't no food here. You might right. want to stop and get you something. No, and, woo, I, woo. and I don't mean it like that. Oh, yeah, what we I'm gonna saying. going to have a little. Mm. It's gonna be some issue. Like I, I wouldn't stopped and got myself something to eat had I known. I mean, the same goes for both sexes. For sure. But what she was saying was, he probably was upset. But she didn't oh, okay. know. She I'm, didn't I'm know. And you. my stepdad is not like that. Like he mm-hmm. will go in in the kitchen and make himself something to eat. He's mm-hmm. always has been that way. Yeah. But it's like she has this mentality that a woman's supposed to cook every night, and that's how she was when I was growing up. Yeah. She made a fresh dinner for my daddy every day. Yeah. And she felt so bad I if love she didn't have mama. it. And that's, but that's what she taught me. I love your mama. I know. Yeah, my mama is one hundred percent. But yeah. I don't like it when she gets down on herself if she can't. Because there's gonna can. be some days that you can't oh, make for sure. that happen. For sure, yeah. you know? no doubt, no doubt. It's unrealistic to think that you're gonna do something every single day for the rest right. of your life. Right. Like that's for sure. that's completely right. unrealistic. And I think that. Just from reading different posts on social media, like people think people have the expectation that, you know, if she's going to cook or if he's going to cut the lawn or if he's going to change the oil or whatever it is that he's going to do this or she's going to do this every single time. No, sometimes I'm going to take your car to Mr. Gleam, Dr. Gleam mm-hmm. and get the oil change and get mm-hmm. the car washed. Like, I'm not going to physically do that myself, but mm-hmm. it'll get done. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's so, so it's the same thing with cooking. I may not be cooking. Maybe but we eat, eat, we eat yeah. Chick-fil-A tonight or something. No you know doubt. what I'm saying? Like, then that's, and that's all that eat. is fine. Yeah. yeah. All that is fine. I have no problem with any of that. I even, hey, we eating sandwiches and I made sandwiches some chip. <laughs> My thing is, you did something. Right. <laughs> so, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Right. That's all. And, and even if you're not cooking, like, hey, man, I'm tired. I don't feel like doing. Communicate it. Yeah. yeah. Let's not. Let's not wait till it's nine o'clock. Hey, I call. Hey, babe, you you ain't gonna do nothing, man. I'm tired of it. Oh, well, yeah. like why you well, stop it? <laughs> fuck you mean? Right, right. Where come from? Like, I'm tired. Right. So like, I'm just saying, hey, man, I don't feel it tonight. So you might want to go get something. That's how communication yeah, is, yeah. is 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 yeah. crucial. And that's not that's what I was saying. Like mm-hmm. it wasn't. It's just that. Okay, so she's getting ready to retire. She wants him to retire, and he wants her to retire. They are both about to be seven. Well, about to be seventy if he's not already. 
And she's like, he probably wants me to retire so I can cook every day. I'm, I said, that is absolutely <laughs> not it. But that, see, that's why I was like, that he did not marry you behind no uh, he hot pressure. He married me for my good guy. Well, okay. See, and that's probably not it. And I'm not going to get in Jackie business, but... <laughs> I heard, I heard <laughs> my mama be knowing what she doing, but, but what I'm, I'm so going to say, okay. <laughs> uh, you, should sit, you should be in the car with us. If you were in the car, you'd be like, Oh, oh no pass. <laughs> um, but I will say that I think it's just that, you know, cause she's, she was born in 1950 mm-hmm. and she yeah. has that old school mentality oh, that, definitely, that definitely. this is my job, but she always had to work too, mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. full time in the yeah. medical center yeah. from Tomball. Yeah. So that's a hell of a hike. Right. You know what I mean? But she still would come home. And then now I think about it because being in her position, because I still try to come home and cook, Mm -hmm. um, if not every day, several times a week. But that's because that's what was drilled in me when I was coming up. Yeah. But it, that shit is exhausting. It is. It's mm-hmm. exhausting. It and then is. the shit, the it's a thankless fucking job. Yeah. Especially Tell me for about the it. kids. I'm like, if you look at this, calling me. You Tell better, me you better um, uh, clean their kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, I'm I'm sorry. I'm just going off on a tangent. <laughs> so, so what do you think? Like every couple needs to have a strong marriage, considering you've been married for 21 years. Mm-hmm. Um, I think to have a strong marriage, you know, I think you just have to want to be there. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, everybody give you these. <laughs> great conference answers and, <laughs> and and let me give you three steps to yeah uh, you know three things but I think at the end of the day you know what me and my wife always ask each other is do you want to be here Aww. regardless you know of what I've done or what you've done mm-hmm. do you do you want to be here yeah. right and I think when the answer is yeah then that's the it's that's, like you can work through anything yeah you can work if you really it, you know? want it if you really yeah. want to because marriage is um you know it's hard to divorce purpose mm. yeah you know what i mean um you know it's the reason why we together mm-hmm. and you know and i don't even know i ain't feeling you right now okay it's a, it's a reason though <laughs> i don't like it but i love you while we together yeah and so yeah, i mean that's what i would say you know yeah I mean, I can't answer because I'm yeah. Serious. But you were saying earlier. I remember you said something earlier about maybe it was you. You said something how people now be on the internet. Like I, I watch, I watch some of these cats mm. who give all this relationship advice. Tony Gaskins. I'm not gonna say it. I'm gonna blend it out. Tony, Tony Gaskins. <laughs> no, what's the what's the bald head dude named the that one that everybody hates? Derek Jackson. Uh, everybody uh, hates. Uh, Derek. Everybody Tariq, hate him. Tariq Nasheed. No, they hate Derrick Jackson. There are people who actually really he, because, well, they must like him because I see him a lot. But yeah. is he married? Well, women like He's him. Married. Yeah, okay. he is. So, so black guys don't like him because I'm they. Sure. Yeah. I'm sure. I'm <laughs> sure. He's like they're like he promoting commitment and faithfulness. Yeah. Fuck that nigga. Well, well, well. See, I don't. It's not even that. Cause see, watch this here. Sometimes you can have a guy who watch this. Who's maybe, and it could be him. He could be strong in this particular area. Mm-hmm. He's strong. Mm-hmm. If this is what he promoting, then he must be strong at it. He ain't worrying about no chick coming in or whatever. Mm-hmm. But now let's talk about other areas. Mm-hmm. How do he talk to his lady? Yeah. What yeah, type gonna- of moody attitude? He, I mean, you, you know what yeah. I'm saying? So you only going to talk about the air you might be strong in. And, right. and don't get me wrong. That might be, you know, ladies love it. Like, oh, yeah, I want a man like that. But be careful. Yeah, that's because just, you might be doing something. Yeah, you, yeah, 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 yeah. You don't. <laughs> yeah, you don't know, you know, the rest of it. So but it all yeah. looks good on the surface. Yeah. So how long you been married? Because I, I saw him a couple of times. I don't know how long he's Let's been married. I, I saw him a couple of times and I was like, and don't get me wrong, I in seen some stuff that, no, 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 either. just on, I yeah. just see him in his car. He yeah, yeah, some, he's always in his car. In his car, yeah, he did some things and, and you know, man, that's, that's one thing about this social media that I just really, really, the I mean, I know it's blessing folks, so I, yeah. I hate to say that I don't like, but. Let me tell y'all ugh. what the first search thing is for his name, Narcissus. <laughs> Being that he's upset. <laughs> 
to me about Derek Jackson is that the things that he says, mm-hmm. it's like basic, basic stuff. Basic, basic. No and doubt. Like Steve Harvey book. Ba- Steve Harvey book was very basic. Yes, it was. I mean, okay, and this is not a hate. I'm no, just no, saying no, when no, I, because I read it, when I read it, I said, wow, this, right. everybody we went crazy this over this. Yeah. Y'all didn't already know this? It's nah. like common sense knowledge yes, or whatever. And, for and, sure. And it's like, and the thing about it that's like so funny to me is that a lot of these guys on social media, they'll be like, you know, oh, Derek Jackson is just, you know, trying to. He's pandering. He, yeah, he's pandering to women and you know yeah, guys hate that yeah mm-hmm. and it's like you know he's he's just saying what what all you women like but you know why he, and, and 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 the guys are right yeah. to a certain degree we're going to pander same. to women because you will support yeah. but guy, but but so the things you're that saying he's, something that we want to yeah. hear yeah but the things that he's saying are things that guys say to us uh, yeah. yeah so it's it's nothing he's not saying anything different but they feel yeah. like he's giving away the game to a lot yeah. of them yeah. he's not saying nothing different though like yeah. No, and, it, and I don't even consider it giving away the game. It's like you know when when you have a a hint of intelligence and you're able to you know um, put sentences and fragments and run ons and, and and make them complete <laughs> paragraphs. Mm-hmm. It just sounds good. I it mean, sounds, he he does put every, he puts oh he puts it together yeah. well. He does. He does. Oh yeah, he does. He does. it's it. like he takes you on a little roller coaster. Yeah. You're like, okay, Derek. Yeah. Okay, Derek. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, you better. Yeah. At the end, you're like, yeah. That's yeah. why. That's why I ain't talking to you he no more. Right. Right. You right. show right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You know, it it pays to be well versed, but at the same time, what I'm saying is, it's just like when people talk about having. Oh, look at my grandparents calling me hmm. late at night. Mm-hmm. That is really right. sweet that your grandparents are calling you. And it's this is a family. It's time. No, they told me that the cell phone battery is dying. Oh, my God. Come over and do. So that's, <laughs> you need to go charge it? They're calling to let me know that, yes. They live in Pearland, too? I live in uh, South Acres. Oh, okay. It's on the they way. They got to let okay. you know that just in case you need to contact me. I see them tomorrow. I'm gonna need you to come I told them low. to call me when they got home. And they just getting home at 838. These folk it's are like, 90. It's like, my battery you know is low. That's what I want to be doing at 90. Yeah. I want to so, be. Be bopping around, yeah, and coming home at eight thirty at night. Yeah. Girl, I better be out late. I better be out past the sun. Yeah, so that's my thing. Like I was able to see this example. My my grandparents they've been married um seventy years. Oh wow, wow. that's crazy. I think my mom and dad would have been together that long. My mm-hmm. dad passed away at yeah. twenty seven years. Okay. Like yeah. the two days after my parents' um twenty seventh. Uh, wedding and gotcha. yeah. he had mm-hmm. cancer mm-hmm. and it took my mom a long time and actually my stepdad she went to she grew up with him in yeah. Huntsville yeah. so it was a, it was nice to see her get yeah, connected yeah, with somebody sure. I mean because even if that was that was her person mm-hmm. my dad they had a purpose yeah. you know what I for mean sure. and it's like I like to see that and I know it was hard on all of us to lose him but I think he came here yeah. and he did what he was meant to do because he's instilled a lot in me yeah that I do to my kids. I might not be the nicest mom yeah. or because I really am not nice. You know, like, you're like they nice. yell them are like, she don't be beating them kids. But yeah. like, y'all, I mean, I don't even, I don't go into it because I do fear CPS. But I, I try my best as, you know, because I spend a lot of time as a single mom. Yeah. So it's just me. I have to do in the house, outside the house. Yeah. yeah. That's why I was late tonight going oh, to yeah. the. Uh, oh, I tip my head off. I'm at home with my wife, and I feel like I need to pay her child support. <laughs> and, I'm, and I'm at the crib. That's a tough it's job. A, it's a tough job. I took my daughter to the doctor the other day by myself for the first time, and <laughs> that's, yeah. that's rough. Oh, my God. That's rough. That's rough. Yeah. Tell her to come over and help you with the kids. Yeah. Like, oh, my God. I don't even know how to function. Right. Yeah. Well, what do you do? Yeah. Like, what do I do at the doctor's office? Yeah, I had how to do you ask him for the I insurance call? First time mom. <laughs> no, she sent me this. She sent me to the doctor like a kid. Okay, he go to folder. Oh he go to the insurance car. She wrote all the questions on the folder that I need to ask. But she did write though. Oh, she did Because you needed that. Watch this. Went online, filled out all the paperwork first because it was changing, changed yeah. to a new doctor. Put that in there. This is so terrible. Oh, what oh, are she, you, two? Like, oh, she set me up right now. But he, but he did what she needed him to do, which was get yeah. the baby to the doctor. So, yeah. Oh, my the God. The filling out the forms and all that yeah. stuff, that's the 
easy part. It's yeah. just so Having funny though yeah. because like it's it's, it's like a child. Like, yeah, it's like a child. It's yeah, like, it's like women have no faith in their husband. Yeah, <laughs> but he would have got there and been like, "Hey, they asking for I X, been, Y, Z." I would have kept. Yeah. I would have been. I kept calling them. Right, and she's trying to avoid yeah. being irritated mm-hmm. about him. And I try not to call her, but <laughs> the lady, the doc, new doc asked me something. I said, "God, no, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Gotta call her." <laughs> So she could pull up these records to see if she had this particular shot. She probably was like, now nah, she was cool with it. She was like, boom, boom. I'm like, okay. Yeah, because that's you didn't so call about funny. anything. That's yeah. so funny to me. I think oh that's great. And I think, honestly, if I had a husband, that is yeah. what I would be doing. And I'd then, be like, I need you to do X, Y, Z, and here go yeah. the package to deliver. Yeah. And then when I got home, she asked me all these questions. I was like, well, she said that. And she asked me, I said, well, she said that. And then, then I said, she said that. And she was like, good job. Right? <laughs> And then you, you got good. the cookie, right? You did good. Yeah. Yeah. See, good job. And then he got his dessert. That's all y'all need to do. Just if I send you with the instructions, do what I told you to do, come back, you're gonna get a cookie. That's yeah. it. And they like that. Yeah. All the instructions. That's really, like honestly, important. Mm-hmm. It's like people don't realize that all you gotta do is just make that appreciation. Mm-hmm. You know, do for each other. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. Like it's I think that's what's missing a lot. This is like well, if I do that, what you gonna do for me? What yeah, you gonna do for me? yeah. I feel like that's just not—that's yeah. not the way to build a genuinely yeah. loving relationship with somebody. Yeah. Then you gotta grow because you know I could talk big now after twenty-one years, right? Mm-hmm. But boy, I had a lot of growing up to do. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, you know, couples who get together now—if you're not going to allow the person. Room for error, right? Room yeah. for growth, because nobody is perfect, the, right? But right. you know, I mean, it's easier said than done, is yeah, what I'm saying. Is. So it's what the expectations come in, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. And yeah, so yeah. you know, we I, I've had opportunity to grow, and we've been able to, you know, and now you know, I can talk big. I can, I can get y'all kind hey, of y'all done did all, all type of relationship talk now, <laughs> but right. you know, I said I done did all yeah, that. Yeah, that's year twenty one, yeah. right? Back in year eight. <laughs> I'll be over here. Like, oh, it's touchy go. It's touchy yeah, go. Yeah, man. Mark sure. say, all I did was go to the doctor and call her six times. I don't understand why <laughs> right, I'm right. in trouble. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. But I like that, though. And you're so open and so genuine about this. There's so many mm. people, like you said, that they're like, yeah, yeah, I'm a professional. Yeah. Like they never messed up at yeah, all. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. And For that's sure. just, this just ain't the way. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. I'm Mm-mm. buzzing. You Keep buzzing? I'm, I'm feeling right. Uh oh. She flies. Off my caffeine pills. Caffeine pills. <laughs> Quote unquote. Quote, ca- cocaine. <laughs> it's a wonderful drug. I mean, I'm not going to say I dibble dabble, but I might know some people who say it's pretty cool. <laughs> Crazy. So, okay. So, I don't even, I was going to ask a question, but now I don't know, Danielle. Go ahead. That's because you're buzzing. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for understanding me, Marcus D. Wiley. No problem. No judgment here. So, I really enjoy you, by the way. <laughs> so I want to know. Okay, so like, I know that people always are saying like the best places to meet somebody is mm. like to go to church. Just talking mm. about this thing. And Mm-mm. but you know when you go to church, there Mm-mm. really aren't any men there. Like it's really it's full of women. It's full of women. I tell women all the time, you ain't gonna get, you ain't gonna find them here. No, you go, you gonna find another woman. That's what you yeah, yeah, find. for sure. You gonna make your best friend. For yes. sure. <laughs> You're going to get yeah. you somebody married. A quote unquote best friend. That's what you're going to find. And then be the main one talking about, oh, I don't know what to do. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm involved with somebody else's husband. Well, ma'am, you went up there. Yeah. So, Here, what you, so no, your question no, is what? My question was like, why do you think men don't go to church? Okay. Great question. Yeah. Tell you why men don't go to church. There's several reasons. I do jokes about this everywhere hmm. I go. First reason, well, it's not, it's not in any particular order. But uh, if I can keep it street, mm-hmm. real recognize real. Uh oh, game yeah. recognize game. <laughs> <laughs> so a lot of the guys don't go to church one because they feel like it is a big pimping game. I flip mm-hmm. down the aisle, you know, I'm looking good. <laughs> they feel like this this cat up here is. Selling a dream. Yeah, yeah, come on, man. Yeah. Oh Lord, now I'm too loud. Yeah, that's 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 one of them. They just kind of feel they, they kind of feel like that. Uh, another reason why men don't go to church is because of the 
you know, sometime in the past, uh, just like we were talking about the the Derek Jackson guy. Mm-hmm. Pandering to just the women. Pandering just to the women. Mm. Yeah. If he don't want to do nothing, you don't need that Negro. You kicking my jaw. No. So she ended up by herself and he like, listen, sis. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, wrist, wrist rub, wrist rub, wrist rub, wrist rub. Right. And she's like, pastor, the only one who understands me. <laughs> Men don't want to go, they don't go to church also because they don't feel like they fit. See, you, really? Yes. I feel like I, I feel like I fit here. Like we're in a time now where, man, I wear my hat on the inside. Mm-hmm. If I'm coming to your church, you, you're begging me, you've been inviting me, you tell me to come. And then when I come, I got to fit into all this criteria. These yeah. Boxes, these rules. yeah. Yeah. Clothing. Clothing. I got behavior. Behavior. I mean, shoes. Hey, what man, kind of car you I, show I, up I, in? All yeah. this is like, ugh. Yeah. You know. Like, can we just come worship? Yeah, I'm just coming. I'm just coming come to check you out loud, bro. Right, I don't, you right. know. Then men don't want to come too because men, why you say you think they feel commitment with you all. Right. I don't want no commitment with this child. I, I, man, I just visit. Now y'all trying to put me on in the parking lot ministry. You trying to put me. <laughs> You trying to put me in the choir. You trying to put me to work. Man, I don't, man, I don't want a man. I ain't, man, I ain't ready. Oh Brother, we need somebody mm-hmm. over here in the children's ministry. Right. And, and he looking like, I don't even like my own kids. I don't even like my own kids. Like my own kids. <laughs> like my own yeah, kids. You want, me to, get, you want like... me to get involved and all yes. that. So yes. it's a, man, and that's just a few reasons. It's a bunch of reasons why, you know, brothers just not, Come in the church because yeah. I mean, I, I mean, when I don't go to church often, I'm not going to even front. Okay, but nigga um, say often like she been in the last year. Yeah, Gone right girl. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, when I've gone, mm-hmm. like the only the men, first time and the last time I went to church, uh-huh. look at that. Mm-hmm. The men that are there, mm-hmm. they're there with their wives or their girlfriends because they're mm-hmm. dragged there. Yeah. You know what I mean, so it's not like. There's a bunch of single men that's just like at church and they're like, OK, I'm trying to get my life straight and I'm tr- I'm trying to find me a wife and all yeah. this stuff. Mm-mm. So it's like, you know, they don't be looking for no wife at church. No, they don't. No, they they there with their they're, because they've been dragged there. Yeah. They be looking for a side chick at church. Well, <laughs> Shut up. A vulnerable woman. Yes. <laughs> One who's alone and single and looking for somebody to rub on her wrist. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> What's crazy is I'm finna show you something. So I perform, I do a lot of single conferences, mm-hmm. right? And when I perform at single conferences, it's full of women, right? Mm-hmm. Um, very few men. And that's has a lot to do with where it's at because as I share with them, when I was coming up, the first question I want to know is, is some women gonna be there? Okay. I yep. mean, when, when my boy say, hey, man, we going to sit, sir. Is some hoes going to be on? Okay. <laughs> I won't. I'll say it. You'll say it. I'll okay. say it for you. So. <laughs> I knew what you meant. Yeah. I was like, oh, you want some hoes going to be on? <laughs> I'll say it. So, so, what's crazy is they have these at the church where it's full of women. Yeah. Mm. Full. Mm-hmm. And men still don't want to come. Right. Some they scared right to go inside. Yeah, some ain't right with that. Yeah. Because yeah. if it's some women there, men typically coming. Right, yeah. right. So for a place that's full of women and men still not coming. Yeah. It's because, you it's know what it's like? It reminds me of, you know, like a polygamous sect. Where What's polygamous? Where it's up? Where they have multiple wives. Multiple like wives, yes. like a, a Brigham Young type thing. Yeah. Mormon and, yeah, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, like yeah, super, yeah. super Mormon people. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Like Big Love, like mm-hmm. the compound. Yeah, I got you. Right, I got you. Right, right. They and excommunicate them sons they because they want the women. Too many, it's too yeah. many men. They, so it's kind of the same. I'm going to excommunicate your son, by the way. <laughs> but... It's like that. Like that's kind of the vibe I get. It's like they're like, I don't want to go because I'm not really welcome there because there's enough women for only the person who's the leader. You know what I'm saying? Mm, maybe. Or and maybe the women are a little thirsty. Very. <gasps> a single man. Well, about yeah, to choke. yeah. You know what? I mean, I will say. Okay, so like, I will say about like maybe ten years ago, like I was really, really into church. Oh, what happened? I was, <laughs> 
Um, what no niggas I don't, don't want to get into that right now. <laughs> like, what happened? She so, say, oh, never mind. Shit. What is it? But I will say, that was like so much drama. Mm-hmm. Messy. It, yes. Because it, it, there's only one single man at the church. And like and everybody these, trying to fuck all these different yes all yeah. these different women trying to hit on this one guy like mm-hmm. and it was just like wait a minute um I was trying to get him like we were gonna go bowling and you know all of this different mm-hmm. stuff and it's like wait a minute why are you all like one why are y'all all tripping like I thought this was like church church like <laughs> yeah exactly we like, talking I, about church yes we talking I'm about like, church I, I thought we were supposed to be fellowship and or whatever yeah. you know and so it's like so y'all really like trying to find your mate here like, like what is it ain't even about no mate so like, yeah. what is the purpose <laughs> it's like, like, like thinking your purpose is like to find to, to have a connection with God right. or whatever but really you're you're masking this connection with trying to find somebody you're gonna have to go to the church Catholic church is not Church is a good place to meet somebody, but it's not the place to meet somebody. Yeah. You know what like I'm if saying? it happens if by it happens, chance. it happens. Because like I went to college, right? I didn't go to college to find a wife. I went to college to get a degree. Mm-hmm. If I happen to find a wife. It just happens. While getting a degree. Yeah. Then cool in the game. And so that's what, um, to your point. You know, a lot of times when, 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 especially sisters, mm. when they come into the church you know, and it's altar prayer Uh-oh. and they're going up. I'm praying for a man. And the reason why, because most sisters, they have it together. I have a career. I have, you know, I'm juicy. I got it going on. I'm just missing the boo. Hmm. And so that's why the male, the male in church for women typically is a big deal because this is all I'm lacking. Yeah. I got everything else together. Is- now the man in church he ain't he, what he lacking is maybe a job, some money, <laughs> or you know he, he all like, the all other all other stuff. <laughs> you know, I'm just saying the single cast. But it's okay to because get it I I can mold you, but you cannot. Yeah, yeah. you I'm absolutely trying to get it together. cannot. Yeah. So when 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 so when the ladies ladies say, "Man, I got it together. I'm I'm straight, but I just need a boo to seal a deal." Yeah, yeah. but they be like they're like, oh, the thing is, it like okay, I'm not going to talk about my past relationship. But it's like, go ahead. I'm gonna talk about it. <laughs> it's like, it's like proceed. Proceed. right. He's like, let it go out, ahead, sis. Daughter. Let it out. As I said, church, come on, daughter. <laughs> okay. Like I felt like, okay, I might be, I might be on my way. Mm-hmm. And then as the years went by, more bullshit. And mm-hmm. then it would always be like, okay, here's a date for when I'm gonna be ready. And I'd be like, boom. And then it would, that day would come, and I'd be like, but you said, and then it would be my fault, right? So that's why I found the last time I was like, you know what? Get the fuck out of here. And oh and God. it was like all he did to really break the camel's back was I said, be here by he, he said, I'm gonna be there by 7 30 mm-hmm. and I'm gonna bring some pizza for you know mm-hmm. to kid. This nigga showed up at nine o'clock and then didn't bring the goddamn pizza. Mm. And Paul Michaela was like, if he just would have brought the pizza, I'm like, it wasn't about the pizza. It was like, that was like the pinnacle of years of you yeah. just full of shit. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know, I mean, you, you need to be able to trust what somebody says yeah. and you need to be able to p- depend on on them that they're going to follow through with what they say that they're going to do. And sure. so it's like, if you can't have that to stand on, then what kind of relationship do you really have? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Y'all just made me minimum, reflect. I need to be able to know <laughs> that you're going to come through when you say you're going to come through. Girl. And I did not even go get nothing to eat. I intentionally sat my ass right there on that couch. And, start and, and I, and when he called, <laughs> it was already way like an hour after the fact I did not answer the phone. He don't come stride into the door like I call. I said, I know. And it is nine o'clock. And my children still have not eaten. Now tell the rest of the story though. Which part you want to hear? How did the night end? I told him he needed to get the fuck out of my house. And I did not talk to him again. And then Danielle knows all the uh, all the ins and outs. She was like, What? Every day she was like, What? <laughs> Oh, okay. It was a lot. No, when and I'm I done, I'm you done. Didn't bring the food and then you still nope. took him to the back. No, no. <laughs> if you don't do no, that's the thing. It's like thing. I'll, I'll never bring the food now. I mean, if right. you see what I'm saying? But see, that was the last, that was like it that was for it. me. I got, that was, because that was the I, point. Right, because I'm the type of person that I will let you make it and I will let you make it 
because I believe that you can do it. And I'm going to give you some shots. Mm -mm. But oh my God, if you get to the point where I'm done giving you a shot, I'm like, bro, you died. You. I think that's what a lot of problems um, that women do have now mm-hmm. is that they give too many, many. too many chances. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, it's like you, you want to believe in them, mm-hmm. but it's like, you know, at what point are you actually going to follow through? Waste his time you know, or I, waste her time. Like, 2019. It's, it's, it's a difference between. You know, I see your potential and you and actually you just abusing me now at this point. Yeah. Like, you know, what what are, what exactly are we talking about here? Like, I I know what you're capable of. I can see this. Mm-hmm. But, but you're sorry. You, man. But you not following through on the things that I see that you're capable of. Right. See, so <clears throat> y'all kill me with this potential thing. I don't um, date on potential. Like, well, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. You'll be like, I barely date. I'm just saying. But first two, of all, <laughs> I'm saying it's two things that, that I'm that I'm hearing. In this, uh, first thing is, it's terrible when you see something in somebody, but they don't see it. Yes. So already right now, it's, I don't even know why you even fighting it. If you see it and they don't see it, yeah, it's already let a lost cause. A losing it's battle. It's a lost cause. Losing yeah. battle. Because you want more for somebody than they, they want, want for themselves. Them themselves. Boy, like you, you better preach. You be, Make them want it. Yeah, you're gonna be beating yourself up, beating yeah. your head against the wall. Next thing, potential. Let's look at potential. Let's say a woman wear a size 20 dress. Mm -hmm. She has the potential (laughs) to wear a size four. She has the number on this. But can she do? Listen, listen. she wear a size 20. (laughs) She said, I'm going to eat right. I'm going to work out. I'm going to do all that. She has the potential to wear a size four. Right. But is she gonna do it? <laughs> so, she gonna do it. So the thing is, here's my thing with potential. You gotta love the 20. Pray that it get to a four. Yeah. But if it never makes it to a four, you still gotta love that 20. I love that 20 though. And that to me, like so when people talk about he or she has potential. Don't fall in love with the potential. Right. Fall in love with who they are. Right. Right now. Right now. Yes. Like almost to the point of like, okay, let's say as far as potential goes, we're talking about like an auto mechanic. Okay. Okay. But but he has aspirations yeah, he to be some uh, nuclear physicist. Okay. <laughs> now, if he don't ever make it there. I love that mechanic. Do you still love the mechanic? Right. Yeah. Because, I mean, he might always just be that. He might just be that. Yeah, like Danielle, you look like you're thinking. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I mean I completely agree with that. Like you know, if you if you can't love the person as, if, as they are right now, mm-hmm. and you're always consistently thinking about what they're going to be, you don't even love that person. Okay. So, for instance, you like are you the Beyonce? Like anything Beyonce? Did I read that under your bio? Or was no, that was her. That was yours. Yeah. So what we're saying is flaws and all. Yeah. Right. I'm a train wreck in the morning. Do you like that? Are you okay with that? Full of holes and all. Right. Yeah. Now, I may not like the flaws, but I love you. Yeah. Yeah. And a lot of times people cannot get past this. The flaws. Well, you know what happens to Marcus is like, and I'll say this is something that I do. Well, mm-hmm. not do now, but did in the past. Mm-hmm. I would be scared to show that. The flaw? Yes, because it's so ugly. Man. Not man. ugly, but it's so raw. You know what yeah. I'm saying? It's just like, that's just you. Yeah. It's not the, the bitch that be on TV or yeah. whatever, whatever. It's just you. And sometimes you are not nice. Yeah. I mean, hell, a bitch have a period. Sometimes I be cranky. Mm-hmm. But it's like, I would always feel like, should I share that? Is it okay? Am I going to be corrected? Yeah. But like, I mean, somebody can say, "Ooh, girl, you need to watch how you talk to people or you need to do this and that. And that's fine. But they still are like, I fuck with you. Yeah. Even still. Right. And there's somebody out there. Yeah. Well, it's kind of like, like that sweater. It's kind of like your girlfriends kind of like and guys that got friends. Mm-hmm. I have a rack of friends that I already know. This boy, he a lie. Uh-huh. <laughs> he a lie all the time, right. Watch this. He a lie. 
Still in my butt, still in my pocket since a, day one. I have right. such an issue oh. with it. Like, I can't get over that, but okay, go. No, but I'm just saying, this, yeah. my pro, this is my boy. He's a liar. Yeah, boy, I'm finna knock off this Benz. No, you ain't finna do shit. Yeah. No, you're not. <laughs> you know, always, man, too. We, man, we, 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 we going to the floor. Maybe we'll fight. No, you're yeah, not. Okay. You wish you was. Yeah. But this is my boy. Mm-hmm. Right. But now, let your man or your woman lie like this. <gasps> I can't really believe different. you. So, so here's my question about that. Do you feel like it's important to have that friendship relationship too with your partner? Because when you you already know your friend, but you still love your friend across the board. Mm-hmm. So, do you feel like it's important for you to be like that with your partner? Friends? Yeah, and on no, some level. No, on the level. Because Always. At the end of the day. Me and my wife wouldn't make 21 years without that friendship. Without friendship. Yeah. The mind blowing sex, that's probably going to end around year 12. Mm-hmm. And yeah. what I mean by that, I ain't talking about like sex not good. I'm talking about your mind blowing sex. Yeah. Like uh, after a while, with the kids now and life, it ain't the same no more. It's just Have, you it's, seen, have it's, y'all it's, seen <laughs> that meme where it says you got to find somebody that's willing to fuck you in the laundry room while the dinosaur nuggets is in the oven? I've seen it. Like, real, no, like a I've real quick quickie. I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. I'm sorry. No, you're good. I, I, I'm like, okay. No, I, I don't, don't want to be offended. You, you not, girl, I ain't offended. I live in the real world. Amen. But it says, like, like basically, fuck all that extra shit. You got to find somebody who's willing to do a quickie with you while the kids is out back playing. Yes. Or whatever, because that's your life is going to change. And ultimately. all that, all that is fine and, and dandy. What mm-hmm. I'm saying is, you don't even want. After a like while that. to mm-hmm. do it. Yeah. If they are playing, let's get a nap. Oh man. It it you're it Let's it, get a nap. It shifts. It, it, it shifts. Yeah. It it like it's, what, it's, your needs and stuff change. Yeah. Like it's not like because you're, you're not trying to like jump each other like yeah. rabbits all yeah. the time. You know what's a great oh, sex night when we sitting up watching Empire Star. And cuddle up I and, love just, Star. and just <laughs> chilling and we just land there. And then maybe. And then go to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> and then maybe yeah, I mean, I mean, maybe I'll rub your booty a little bit and we yeah, take a nap. Oh, now you know all, maybe wives, maybe all wives love a good butt rub. Yeah, so, but it's not always like you said. It's not yeah, always the same. But yeah, we ain't got. I mean, after, come on. Now when we first got married, of course you just. But, Welcome to my sex yeah, room. Sex, just straight up, just yeah, always. Sex will uh, um, maintain or preserve the in yeah. the beginning. But there's so much more but that needs to be there. It's more like, hey man, my friend, you know, that's the thing about marriage. You got a you got a business, my business partner. This mm-hmm. my friend. Mm-hmm. This is my co-parent. This is my chef. Yeah. This is my lover. You, All the things. You see what I'm saying? It's a lot of stuff. Yeah. And a lot of times when you getting dominated just with the lover, well, as soon as that drop off, now you're going, well, where's this other stuff? At? You know, I say, like, we talked about like and love, but I feel like it's almost the opposite. Like, if you don't like genuinely this person, because some of that lusty love, like you said, that goes away. Mm-hmm. If you don't genuinely like that person, what you going to do in 12, 15 years? You're going to be like, first of all, I don't even like you. I don't even like you, cuz. Uh, you could go outside right now. I actually have a tow truck planning to run you over in the street. Walk outside. Yeah. Let's see what happens. Because I dislike you that much. I feel like in order to really just make it, you really have to be like that tight. And I think that's what my mom was so upset about. Mm-hmm. Not so much the the lover part, but I will never forget whenever my dad passed away, she laid on the bed and she just cried and she said, oh, yeah. how could you leave me yeah, like this? Sure. Yeah. Because they was like, you yeah, know, yeah. like yeah. almost 30 years of just them, yeah, like beefing back and forth or whatever, like get into it. And every time he would do something, because my dad was kind of wild yeah. and he sort of calmed down whenever they got married. Yeah. Well, not even after they got married, but like when my sister was born, he was like, OK, yeah. I'm going to calm down a little bit. Yeah. And when he was still smoking, you know, he was smoking his weed and he was doing <laughs> his thing. And she was like shaking her fist because she's very square. My mama, yeah. I love her so much, but she's like. You know, in Huntsville, we just ran around and skipped. And I'm like, girl, that ain't life. <laughs> you know, and and she like she'll tell me about times that she wanted to divorce him because like he had one time had an incident where he fell because he was a workaholic. So he would work, 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 you know, so we could have yeah. things. Yeah. And he hit his head in the backyard and she was like, I was ready to divorce him because they found 
opiates, which we don't know what it was, we know. <laughs> and THC in his blood, you know, from the test yeah. of the doctor. And she was like, I'm so disappointed in you, Albert. Was ready to divorce him behind, you know, street yeah. drugs or whatever. Right. But she didn't because, yeah. like you said, they were both like, I still want to be here. Yeah. yeah. And so... I hope to find that one day, just like a friend, basically, because that's what you need. You need a partner, like you said. Partner, man. Because really, you're running a business. Cause that's what it is. That's what that's what a husband and wife is. It's a in in urban vernacular, it's a team. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. This is team whoever. Yeah. Team us. Team us. Right. We together, mm-hmm. not here, not there. Right, it's the team. Yeah, and everybody run their team different. Yeah, you amen know, my, to that. My team run this way. And yeah, you work over here. Don't mm-hmm. try to mimic no somebody else's team. You can't do that because there's two different people involved. Exactly. It's everybody's different. Everybody different. I just think that people nowadays don't necessarily see the the benefits mm-hmm. of like being in a partnership because they think you know. Or well, why do I need this person? I can do all of this stuff by myself. Because exactly. your you neck not I mean? going to hurt if you have somebody and to help you. It's like, well, you know, I don't need a woman to cook for me. I, I mm. cook my own. Your food going to taste better if you have somebody who know how to cook. But it's like, you know, I think that. Especially when she cooking boy shorts. <laughs> Could be that. I, I just think that people have a tendency to minimalize what people have to offer. And they yeah. minimalize the companionship part of it. And the validity of it all. you know, like you need somebody that you can talk to. You need that person to bounce ideas off of. To to share your wins with because it makes that win even better. Like, it makes it feel, you know what I mean? When you got somebody to say, girl, you better be doing that. Exactly. And and even when... you're building this camp, this empire. Right. When these kids come up, it's like, Look what we produce. They right. Look what they doing. Right. So, right. I, mean, I think a lot, I think that's that's a, a bit of a problem with our culture these days. I mean, yeah. I, I, don't, I wouldn't even say that's just even within the black culture. No, it's, yeah. it's pretty much like. But I will say this about all my white friends. Cause I grew up in Tomball, so you have I, white friends. Yes, because yes. I grew up in Tomball. That's what I'm saying. You grew up in Tomball. I'm saying you have white friends. I mean, of course, I have black friends now yeah. as an adult, but as a child, I, I didn't have yeah. any. I didn't have any. Right. Which is good for me now because you I'm like the white guy. The code switching is just tight. Did you date a white guy? Yeah, I did. Yeah. When I right after high school. Okay. Now, when I got to be about twenty, was when I was like, well, they're not really like me. Yeah. You know, and it's it's not that they're not human like right, you, right. but there's differences, and right. I didn't know that until I really got of age, yeah. and um, it's kind of like like I started this bow thing. I'm not going to say who it was, but I had one of my very best friend, white woman, came to me and said, I know you started your consulting business. You need to look into diversity consulting. She was like, huge market right now. She was like, they are fighting in the small shops because they want to market to black people. They don't have the models because they don't know any black moms who can take pictures of their kids for them for their wares. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, you're right. This is perfect for me. I could just go, because I know how to talk to you. Oh, yeah, I know how to say, hey, blah, 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 right. because that's all I grew up with. Right. That's really, that's me. Yeah. But also me, girl, let me tell you what we're going to do. Yeah. This is going to be great. We're all going to make money. We're all going to live. Everything's going to be bomb. Black dollar pop. Right. So it's like, I don't know. I just feel, <laughs> I feel overwhelmed with with uh, purpose right now. I feel <laughs> pregnant with purpose, if that Come makes sense. I'm pregnant. <laughs> For the first time I'm pregnant, I'm not pregnant with some niggas, baby. (laughs) I actually said that last week. I said, you bitches want to be pregnant so much. Be pregnant with purpose. Please find something worthwhile to be pregnant with. (laughs) So how did y'all like this wine? How did you like the wine? I know you drank a little bit of it. Yeah, I'm I'm sipping on it. You know, uh, I'm not a wine guy, but... Do you taste the tequila? It's good. I don't really... I'm not a really a drinker. Period. Yeah, the waste of wine. It's not a waste. I'm I'm sipping. You're sipping. Watch this. No, you <laughs> oh. <laughs> the little teensy winksy sip. It's cool though. It's cool. So Daniel, why don't you give him the rundown of how we rate it so we can give him number? So yeah, so we rate the wine on um taste, mm-hmm. aroma, um finish. Finish, body. body, and it's something else. Taste. 
No, I said wait. Taste, taste aroma. Finish taste, body. Wait, finish. Wait, no. Uh, aroma, finish, taste, body, clarity, clarity. Yes, mm. that's what we. Um, A moment of clarity. Yeah, mm. <laughs> that's what we base the wine off of, and it's um, so it's like five points each category for the highest score is twenty five. Mm. So um, with that, what number would you give it? I would give this. <sighs> <laughs> I saw you swirling it earlier. You see me swirl? Yeah. yeah I watch movies. It's got a little tannin on there. I see the little, you see the legs? You see how it, yeah. how it hits the wine up mm-hmm. here, like it hits the glass and it stays. That's the legs of the wine. Okay. I would give this 21. You would? Okay. Good job. Right. Yeah. I actually agree with you because I actually think that this is very smooth. Mm-hmm. Um, I like. So I really don't really care for Chardonnay so much anymore because mm. I used to drink it so much. Okay. Now you're you're more of a connoisseur now. You're like, oh, the whole the little <laughs> dumb damn uh, wines with the with the names out of no, no. this world. So, um, but I actually I really really like this Chardonnay. Like I probably would start drinking it myself at the house. I'm gonna give it a 25. Yeah, so 25. That's yeah. our composite. Yeah. So it's a 20. So we're rating it at a, a total score of 22 out of 25. Cool. Cool. Yeah. Man, this was great. I really enjoyed this conversation. Um, it was nice to just be able to talk to somebody who's like, you know, intelligent and like old, not well, older than us. You're older, a little older than we are, and yes. more knowledgeable on some things. And it was just great. I liked it. Yeah. It was well, thank you not that we usually that. rate our guests, but well, it seems like that's what you're on the path of doing right now. So what are we gonna give Mark? I'm gonna give him a ahead and give him a 10. <laughs> Um, do we have any updates? Oh, we have our, well, please be looking out on our social media for our, um, 100th episode celebration. Mm -hmm. We are going to do it so big because who would have thought that three girls from Houston, Texas would have made it 100 fucking episodes based on (laughs) girl talking wine. We didn't been through some shit and I just appreciate everybody who's been listening this whole time. And I feel like, you know, we're really kind of turning the corner. I'm not going to call us the read or nothing like that. <laughs> but we might be getting there. Yes, we might be. But yeah, so we're going to be on March 1st mm-hmm. is when the celebration live episode 100 live live podcast of the 100th episode is okay. going to be March 1st. Yes. And then also we may have a little party afterwards, but the location is uh, TBD, right? We're yeah. still working on that. Yeah. So that's to be determined. Yes. Thank you, Marcus. So go to our website and sign up for the newsletter. Yes, so you will you get know. details um, when we release them. Yep. Oh. www.betweenusgirls.com podcast.com also you will get if you sign up for that newsletter i'm telling you how you're gonna get your life you're gonna get premier first dibs to our newsletter and danielle's newsletter is going to be um really cute the blog. this oh uh, well you're talking about the blog news. yeah the blue the, okay the blog is going to be in the newsletter okay <laughs> y'all know what the fuck i mean y'all know what i mean by the time this episode comes out, oh, it's going to be Sharonda's turn. So just be watching, okay? Go like, subscribe, follow, share, and head over to the Patreon and drop your girl about $5. I mean, I know. No, it's not you, for you. Yeah, all balling. I mean, you spend $5 on a burger from somewhere. Yeah. You're going to shit it out. This you can keep forever. <laughs> Yes, please go to our Patreon. But uh, patreon.com backslash between us girls. Is it podcast or just between us? It don't I think just, it's just between us girls. It's just between us girls. Yeah. All right. Bye. Peace. Thank you for joining us on Between Us Girls. But don't keep it a secret. Listen and share with everyone you know. See you next week.